Welcome, welcome to another Animal of the Week. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at a very strange and quite disturbing turtle, the giant Asian softshell turtle. These turtles are not exactly what people think of as turtles. They lack the shell that your general turtles possess. Their long snouts also add to the whole strange look. Obviously, these are actually turtles, and they are rather large, and they do have soft shells, and they're even from Asia. So for the first time in a while, we actually have an animal that's name isn't a lie. Feels strange, doesn't it? So, Asian softshell turtles, where in the world would they come from? Unsurprisingly, they come from Asia, but more specifically, they dwell in the deep jungles of the Malaysian Peninsula, Borneo, Bangladesh, and even the Philippines. They are freshwater turtles, and therefore like fresh water, dwelling in swamps, wetlands, lakes, and large rivers. They are most commonly found in large, slow-flowing rivers, which creates problems for them in the modern world, where many large and calm rivers in Southeast Asia have become polluted and overcrowded by humans. They've also been seen in some coastal areas near the mouths of freshwater rivers and deltas. They'll stay away from the actual ocean. It would be rare to find one off the coast in saltwater sea, and if one was found like this, it probably wouldn't survive very long. Interestingly, this turtle is a vicious and intelligent ambush hunter. Doesn't really look it, does it? Its flat and soft body allows it to bury itself in the mud and silt at the bottom of rivers and lakes, with just its eyes and long snout visible. It can stay like this for hours, and surfaces only two times per day in order to breathe, and then it will return to its state of ambush. When a crustacean, fish, or mollusk comes along, it will grab it and eat it and then wait, buried in the mud and silt for the next opportunity to eat. They are also known to feed upon marine vegetation if they need to, and they don't have to spend hours at a time lying in wait to ambush a plant, so we can offer a quick and easy meal for them. The rarity of these turtles makes the natural breeding process hard to study, but their rarity also means there are many captive breeding programs that artificially fertilize and breed them. Breeding takes place naturally from June to September, just before the height of the monsoon season. They obviously lay eggs, 20 to 30 of them every February to March, after the monsoon season, in the mud of riverbanks. The eggs are very small, only around 3 centimeters in diameter, and are therefore easy pickings for many animals. This isn't helped by the fact that being turtles, the mothers don't offer their eggs or babies any sort of protection. Many birds and reptiles enjoy eating the eggs, and the young that hatch, but the strangest part is that humans do too. The eggs are eaten by some in these areas, which is only helping the species decline. Their squishy and flat bodies combined with their snouts make them well adapted to the ambush style of hunting they employ. They spend around 95% of their time just lying in mud underwater waiting for prey. Their ability to hold their breath for many hours is crucial to their hunting strategy, and it means that they only have to surface two times a day, which also helps them avoid any danger they may face. Their soft shell isn't all great though. It may allow them to hide better than their hard-shelled counterparts, but they are rather defenseless if they ever get found. These turtles are under huge threat from humans. The IUCN classes them as threatened, but their numbers keep decreasing. There are many causes for this decline, from pollution in rivers to food sources disappearing to humans hunting and eating them for their eggs. All this has prompted a huge amount of effort to be put into their conservation, as it would be terrible to lose these truly bizarre creatures. One way this is being accomplished is through captive breeding. It's not fully captive breeding, it's more like captive adoption. If locals find their eggs, they are encouraged to bring them to centres where they will be looked after. The egg hatching captivity, and then once they are old enough, the turtles are released into the wild. This massively increases their chances of survival, as they are protected when they are eggs, and in the vulnerable first few weeks when anything slightly bigger than them may decide on having a quick meal. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.